Tido, hi. Nossa, eu dei Hello everyone. You are welcome to the session on private archive collections in Nigeria. Do we have any um, discussions here in our midst? The chair of the panel can take on, please. Can everybody hear me? Yes, all right. Welcome, everyone, all the way from uh, the U.S. Um, it's 6 a.m. here, so it's a little dark. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so I am very happy to introduce this uh, discuss discussion today and would like to spend a little bit of time introducing um, the subject and the panelists. And then I think we will go into about 15 minutes each um, for each discussant to kind of introduce us to their archives and, and give us a little bit of information about that. And then um, I will ask a few leading questions and then we'll open it up for a broader discussion. Does that sound okay with everyone? Okay. All right, so this session is um, focused on um, Scott, uh, private archives and archival collections in Nigeria. And these archives, which are scattered across Nigeria, are countless in, have countless historical um, significance, which uh, include archives, monuments, and objects. And it is not enough to pontificate a known fact that these, are, that these collections are in a state of despair and disrepair. What is most important are conversations about their preservation. And that's what we're gonna be sp spending a lot of our time talking about today, the preservation and dis dissemination of these archives and encouraging the research that might uh, be generated from them. Um, so this round table, which is organized by the um, LSA conference seeks to engage these questions of private archives and other historical co collections across Nigeria. Um, topics will include, uh, but are not limited to funding, digitization technology, politics of success, of access, I should say, preservation, advocacy, threat, and commercialization. So my name is Ogunet Oja uh, Oko. I am an assistant professor of African history here at Loyola University, Maryland. My work concentrates on minority identity, gender, migration, and citizenship in modern Nigeria. My forthcoming book, which will be published by Cambridge University Press, is titled Minority Identities in Nigeria, Contesting and Claiming Citizenship in the 20th Century. I'm currently sitting on the editorial board of the Contemporary Journal of African Studies, and I sit on the accessions board for the Baltimore Museum of Arts, um, Africa, Asia, <laughs> American Indian and Pacific Island collections. I'm happy to be here and be in conversation. Now I'd like to introduce the panelists and I'm gonna be introducing them in the order that they will speak as well. So we have first up, uh, Mufutao Oluwashegun Jima, who is a lecturer 
in African history at the Department of History and International Studies, Federal University in Benin Kebi, Nigeria. He holds a BA in History and Diplomatic Studies from Olabisi Onabanjo University in Ago Iwoye, an MA in History from University of Ibadan and a PhD from Amadou Bello University in Daria. He's a fellow of American Council of Learned Society, African Humanities Program, and he will discuss the Honorable Dekunle Ali's paper, papers. Next, we will have Chido Onuma, who is a journalist, archivist, author, and rights activist. He holds a PhD in communication and journalism from the Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona in Barcelona, Spain. He is a coordinator of the Socialist Library and Archives of Nigeria, Calabar, Cross River State, and is the coordinator of the African Center for Media Information and Literacy uh, and, uh, and Information Literacy in Abuja, a Pan-African center that focuses on media, information, research, advocacy, and training. He is the author of We Are All Biafrans, among other books. Next, we have Dr. Raphael James, who is the founder and director general of the Center for Research Information and Media Development, which manages media information and political research. He also runs the CRI MMD Skill Acquisition Center for Women. As of February 2024, they have trained a total of 8,100 women free of charge in different vocations. He is a historic and educative tourist in Nigeria, and he has visited 35 out of 36 states, documenting over 500 tourist sites over the last eight years. And he is the founder of the richest private history museum in Nigeria with over 40,000 photos and many artifacts and memorabilia. Finally, we have Sarah Panata, who is a permanent researcher at the French National Center for Scientific Research, Sinos Po Bordeaux specializing in modern African history and gender studies. She's currently at work on her first book manuscript, tentatively titled, Without Us, There is No Nation and No Generation, a history of women's movements in, and nation building in Nigeria, 1940s to 1990s. For this research, which started in 2014, Sarah went through several Nigerian women's activists collections. She spent several years working on, on the F.A. Ogunshe papers, which are part of the Ogunshe Foundation, which will, which will be discussed today. Thank you all for um, coming. And um, it looks like we don't have all of our panelists here, but I am I hope that they are in the room. <laughs> um, so without further ado, we'll get started. I'd like to invite, um, Dr. Jimo to get us started. Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Your audio is a little bit. I hope you can hear me, Oko. We can hear you, but you're very, you're very, um, oh. Can you turn the volume up on your on your um, microphone? Uh, I must uh, confess that uh, the work. I've been following your work for some time, and I'm quite happy to share the same panel with you on this uh, particular subject. I hope I'm audible enough. Yes, you are. Yeah, good. Um, I, I, amazingly, two years ago, uh, precisely today, two years ago, I was with uh, late Chief Adekunle Ali in his number 25 Dayoshitu Street at Yanopaja, discussing how to preserve his legacy. Ironically, two years, the old man is no more. And the legacy is lying fallow at his number 25 down Shitu Street at Yanopaja. Um, private archival collections in Nigeria, especially the one I'm quite familiar with, uh, Lagos, we have an incredible volume amount of 
information, collections, newspapers, and some other sources in private homes scattered across Nigeria, especially the one I'm familiar with in Lagos. And in the last 50 years, one of the most prominent activists, private you know, archivists in Nigeria is um, Chief, late Chief Adekunle Ali, who was born in 1934 in Lagos to a very prominent family of a Falami family in Lagos Island. Um, he wasn't trained as an historian. He was trained as an accountant at the City College University in London. And um, he had a brief stint with UAC as a salesman before, you know, he ventured into politics. Uh, in 1983 or thereabouts, he was elected as a member of House of, House of, House of Representatives. But from 1950 up to 2003, I can tell you that Baba Ali witnessed some landmark uh, um, events that defined the character and the policies of Lagos during his lifetime. Hardly you discuss any issue on Lagos history that Baba Ali would not have at least a piece of paper to back up whatever narratives, you know, whatever story he would tell you. Um, Baba Ali, aside from having a huge private collection of important documents, right from 1861, when Lagos was, you know, incorporated into the orbit of British, you know, uh, empire, till 19, 2003, you can be rest assured that if you visit his home at number 25, Dayoshitu Street, Baba Ali have about 7,000 pages documents scattered in his three bedroom bungalow, ranging from history of Lagos, social history of Lagos, political history of Lagos, monarchical history of Lagos. That's what could well okay. So we've lost Dr. Juma. Hopefully, oh, we've lost him. All right, I think he's on his way back. Sorry about that, Dr. Juma. Um, we, we we got you where you um, where you left off. Um, Right. So, Go ahead. In 2006, I was part of the committee raised by the then Lagos State Governor, Baba Tunde Fashola, to research and document Lagos history. We had three professors on that panel. But I can assure you that the star boy of that panel was Chief Adepuli Ali, taking us through time and space on Lagos history, directing us to incredible source, sources on Lagos history, from map to primary document and his own eyewitness accounts. So, Baba Ali gave an incredible insight into, into potential sources, apart from what we know, the general you know, knowledge about archives and what have you. But Baba Ali possessed a lot of primary document and written document and court proceedings that can actually redirect and reinterpret you know, Lagos history. A aside from that, not just the man was not just collecting, you know, documents about Lagos history. Himself, you know, created history. Because as at the time when it was, when the Buhari Junta came in 1986 or thereabout, or 83, and the House of Representatives was dis disbanded, Babali went into journalism. 
and he started, you know, writing on issues that pertains to Lagos. He actually ran a, a, a radio program, a TV series and a radio program on Lagos history, pointing our, directing our attention to what I can call, you know, history from below, individuals that actually contributed to the making of Lagos. That these are people that you, um, archives are silent about what uh, Matthew Gandhi will call uh, historiographies of absence. People that you cannot find on the pages of archival, archival documents, but they are instrumental to how the city was formed. Um, I will give you an instance. You can only see the details of how Musa Dikwa Adele emerged as Oba of Lagos. What you will find, you will find in the archives and pages of newspapers was the legal issues that surrounded that particular episode of Lagos history. But talking to Baba Ali, Baba Ali will give you time, space, individuals that were involved in the you know, vandalization of Igai Dugono during the struggle for the possession of that historical uh, palace. So in other words, when writing Lagos history, the contribution of Baba Ali, you can hardly see in the last 50 years, um, I've not seen any PhD students writing on Lagos history, right from Christian which Christian Mann have also attested to in the past, right from Christian Mann up to myself and Ali Moshomoto, Abib Sonny. Hardly you will see any PhD student or scholars of Lagos history that have not visited or interviewed Ship Adekunle Ali because of the enormous information in his possession. Uh, I am not saying, per se, that everything gathered by this old man is devoid of archival politics, because there is politics in preservation of archival documents, which is whether you go to British archives or you go to national archives or any archive for that matter all over the world, the politics of archival preservation is there. But Baba Ali gives you that you know, a real opportunity to look at Lagos history from a different you know, angle, using a different document, especially primary document and written information. Because it was privileged enough to interact, he interacted with a lot of people back in his days in Lagos. He was raised by his grandmother, who was also a sheep and a market woman. One of the followers of Alimo Tupelehura. Perhaps that's my be responsible for Baba Ali's article on Alimo Tupelehura, totally different from everything you might have read about Alimo Tupelehura from established scholars. Hello? Hello? Dr. Okay, Hippo, we can hear you. Okay. So I just want to remind you, you have about five minutes left. We have, uh, our, I think I should run over, I've been fashioned um, on, on Lagos history. To so look in Lagos, and unfortunately, Baba Ali's uh, uh, private archives right at in his house at Yanopaya is presently lying fallow and um, we are trying to figure out what we can do 
to actually, you know, preserve, digitize and preserve, you know, the uh, archives. Um, I was actually, we were uh, assisted by University of Columbia to digitize and uh, organize these uh, Baba's uh, private archives, which we did, you know, um, we came up with a website, uh, www.ourlagoshistory, to actually put some of these documents online. But presently, we are talking to Lagos state government to see how that private collections can be taken over by government, digitized, and uh, preserved for public uh, good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ali. Um, next, we would Dr. like Ali. to hear from <laughs> oh, Dr. Juma, sorry. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to hear from um, Dr. Onuma. We can't hear you, I'm sorry. Um, maybe check your microphone. No. We are not hearing you. If you check the settings on uh, on Zoom and check that your microphone is turned up, you go to the settings in your Zoom window. Yeah, it's full. Everything is okay. Okay, we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Well, I did. All right. Thank you very much, uh, the chair of the panel. Thanks for the opportunity uh, to talk about the project I'm working on. My name is Chido Anuma. I coordinate uh, a project in Calabar Cross River State called the Socialist Library and Archives. Uh, we are currently being supported by the French Institute for Research in Africa, IFRA, through the, social, uh, through the Center for Democracy and Development. But before IFRA came in uh, two years ago, we had started this project like many libraries and archival projects in the country and indeed around the world, we, we had the opportunity three years ago uh, when we got a treasure trove of materials by one of uh, the country's leading public intellectual and journalist and author, Edwin Madunagu, who had collected materials for he and his partner, uh, ben Emadunagu had been collecting books and correspondences, newspaper articles, had also been doing a lot of writings for over 50 years. So three years ago, when Edwin Madunagu celebrated his 75th birthday, he decided to make all his materials available to the public. Uh, so we we're thinking of what to do with this material. Fortunately for us, and unlike uh, the situation with other archival projects in the country, we had the good fortune of these materials being well preserved. They were kept in good order over the years. Of course, they've gone through several stages of preservation, but because they, they were kept in good order through different faces. Uh, they used to belong to some research institute, which wound up and then they decided to move the materials 
to another organizations to hold and so on until three years ago, the formal presentation to, uh, to the public. So when we had this opportunity, the first thing we thought of is what do we do with this? These materials are in good shape, thousands and thousands of books, thousands and thousands of newspaper uh, essays, collections, and so on, clippings, bound newspapers, journals, and so on. And we sat down and agreed that the best way to continue to preserve this will be to start a digitization project. And we set up a website, Socialist Library and Archive, dot org luckily for us then uh, ifra came in saw what we were doing and started supporting uh the project they had an idea which included uh, working with already existing libraries and archives of progressive nigerians to preserve their materials and the uh, project was titled Protecting Political Activists Archives to Write Another History of Nigeria. There were a number of things that would come out of this, including essays, workshops, seminars, and conver national conversations, excuse me, on uh, the outcome of this in intervention. But first of all, the idea was to digitize important and uh, archival holdings that were either going out of print or would eventually decay or you know go bad for one reason or another. So we needed to find a way to keep the holdings of these radical Nigerians and pro-democracy activists to increase accessibility to these materials uh, as well as preserve them uh, for posterity. So we we basically have been working on that in the last two uh two years as i mentioned earlier the the archive the materials are in good top shape if anything the challenge is just assistance and to help uh, digitize this uh, material. We started two years ago, the, a number of equipment, cameras, digital copiers, and uh, compute to uh, adding site. Uh, Sorry, my network went off there. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We oh, you sorry got, about... started getting cut off um, when we, you were describing what the challenges are. Oh well, that's uh well, I would the if and if we would like to describe it as a challenge. We have quite a number of materials, uh, sorting which and which to. Uh, we've been able to digitize, you know, over a thousand Fusman, Basi, Ekubasi, uh, Bene, and Edwin Maduna, Gubiadu, Jeifu, Curtis, Joseph. Uh, 
But a lot of those who control the country, they are writings. Many of the library and others who are the original. I'll try and run through this thing quickly. I'm in some resort town way inside uh, somewhere in a quiet bomb state, I guess. That's part of the challenge. Yeah. So uh, we, we've done this and then uh, we have, so if you go on the website, uh, socialistlibrary.org, we've categorized the process into economy, labor, media, uh, movement, women's movement, and so on. And then we have journals on Africa, uh, capital and class, international socialist review, labor review, and prominent historical figures in the political evolution of the last hundred years and, and so on. Uh, so it, it's an exciting what we are happy with the progress we're making is just uh, in terms of looking to the future we plan to make this you know a permanent get a permanent place to uh, every and archive so that students researchers can walk in Uh, they can uh, available online. Of course, every online it's uh, it's free. If you require additional information, you can write to the library, and we even if it's not available online, we can digitize or photocopy, scan, and uh, and send to you quickly to round up. In terms of the challenges we face, of course, we need additional resources to. Uh, get more people involved so that we can hasten the digitization process. As I mentioned, uh, beyond digitizing essays and journals now, we are also hoping to digitize uh, books, those we have copyrights on, you know, books belonging to people who are active members of the library itself. Uh, so we're, we're looking at Fund for Sustenance, getting more hands to work on the project and maybe getting additional equipment and materials that would ease the digitization uh, uh, process. So I, I'm happy to take comments or questions concerning the work uh, we're doing, but in all, overall, I, th I think we, we have a very good uh, project. We have a very good experience in terms of the work we're doing in Calabar. And uh, I'm happy to hear what people think uh, if people have the opportunity to look at the website, but also to learn from others where uh, others who are here and what they are doing. But more importantly, to collaborate. If people want to visit, we'll, we'll be happy to share ideas and partner with them to develop our own library and archives and their own library and archives. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Onuma. Uh, next, um, I'd like to invite um, Dr. Panata to uh, let us know about the collection, the Gunche collection. You're muted. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'm trying you. to share my screen again. Uh, can you see this the PowerPoint? Yep, we can. Okay, great. So first of all, thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here and I'm so sorry I cannot uh, 
Uh, I couldn't attend um, from Lagos. Um, I would like to thank the L LSA uh, committee for gathering us together and have the opportunity to have this kind of conversation and of course to the chair of, of this panel. Um, so today I'm here as a historian, um, so I'm not representing the Ogun Sheye Foundation, but I'm here as a historian who um, had the opportunity to um, did extensive research in the Ogun Sheye Foundation and also who had the opportunity in 2021 to cooperate uh, with Professor Ogun Sheye um, in the creation of a website uh, for the foundation. I will come back to it uh, later. Uh, um, I, um, Dr. Shagono Wunsheye, so the son uh, of the of Professor Wunsheye, was supposed to be here with us today, but he couldn't make it at the end. So I'm also trying to I, I tried to include uh, his ideas in the in the PowerPoint presentation. So first of all, um, sorry, can you see the PowerPoint like this? So first of all, just a few words on the Ogun Shaye Foundation. So the Ogun Shaye Foundation is an educational foundation established in the 90s uh, to commemorate the work of late Professor uh, Ayodele Ogun Shaye and Professor Felicia Adetaon Ogun Shaye. Uh, so basically, um, the, the Ogun Shaye Foundation um, has a lot of uh, objectives. I'm not going to talk about the, the foundation itself today, but you can find more information on, on the website. I will come back to the website later. But uh, today I'm presenting the library of the, um, the foundation and also the archival materials. So first of all, some, some practical information. Ogunchi Foundation is located in Ibadan at Four University Crescent in uh, Bodija, so um, near the food court for those who are familiar with the city. And you can access the official uh, website at this address. And I think it's uh, you can find a lot of information I'm sharing today on the uh, on the website. Uh, so do not hesitate to go and uh, have a look around. These two pictures are to present the uh, the foundation. So on the first one, um, on the left, you can see the the building, and uh, the foundation is located on the first floor. And uh, on the picture on the left, on the right, you can see the, the main entrance uh, of the foundation. So first of all, um, the, the, some, uh, some insights from the library. Uh, the Ogunshe Foundation uh, houses a library containing uh, a lot of books collected by late uh, Professor um, Ogunshe by, and by uh, Professor Felicia Ogunshe. So these books are quite rare. Uh, they have a, a really an, an immense collection. On the website, you can find the list uh, of books available. Uh, it's the original list that you can also um, read in the uh, in the library. And um, you can find different type of books, uh, Nigerian books, uh, foreign books, a PhD, um, uh, PhD thesis, for example, who are supervised. Uh, by uh, the two professors during the years uh, in uh, in UI, and the access to the library is free uh, for all researchers and students, uh, and uh, I mean it's it's very nice and very well organized. Uh, then the Open Shape Foundation also uh, houses uh, an archival section. You can see here two uh, pictures of uh, of the archival materials, and. I mean, I'm going to spend more time on in describing this uh, this archival section. So the the section is divided into two collections. Basically, uh, one um, is related to the personal papers of Professor uh, Felicia Wuncheye, and it contains uh, about um, five hundred uh, folders. And the other one um, is related to the personal papers of uh, her husband, Professor uh, Fidelis Ayodele Ogunsheye, and it's uh, it's, uh, it's 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 bigger, and it, it's um, uh, about um, uh, nine hundred folders. So on the website uh, that I, uh, I I showed before, you can find the funding aids uh, of the the two um, collection, uh, and there are also 
pictures, uh, pamphlets, and gray literature that are available in this archival section that are not available um, uh, online in the finding aids. Uh, so it's uh, it's really a, a massive uh, collection of documents. Um, concerning the type of document, the materiality of these archives, uh, you can, in the Ogon Cheye Foundation archival section, you can read paper documents, but there are also photographs and maps. So just two words to, to give you an, a general overview of what you can find in each of the two uh, collections. Um, concerning the Felicia de Tawagunsheye uh, Foundation, you can find a lot of materials on uh, women's history in the country, starting from the 40s. Uh, the, all these materials were collected by the couple starting from the 40s, and they were very well um, uh, organized in, the, in, in all these years with the help of uh, archivists and librarians. So it's it's quite easy to go through the, the archival section and to find uh, and to find documents that are very well preserved. Um, so you have all a, a section on um, the activity of um, Professor Ogun Sheye as a uh, women's rights activist. So she was a member of several women's movements, women's organization in uh, Ibadan, Western region, and uh, Nigeria in general. So a lot of materials from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, she, was she was also the organizer of the African Woman Designer Future Conference. Uh, it was the first conference gathering together uh, women from French and uh, from uh, French speaking and uh, um, uh, um, Anglophone speaking West Africa. So she has a lot of material materials related to this conference and a lot of pictures as well. Uh, she was also a member of different, different um, West African organizations. So her collection around women's activism is really huge and uh, I would say unique. Um, and uh, then the, you also have materials on her work as educationist. Uh, she was professor of library studies in UI, the first uh, female professor uh, in Nigeria, and also chief of department of uh, library studies uh, also in UI. So you can find also in, um, in archives a lot of reflection, uh, reflections on how to uh, conceive the classes, on how to improve uh, uh, education, uh, courses. So it's very interesting also for um, all researchers and students interested in the history of education in the country. And finally, uh, in our collection, um, uh, we can also find a lot of uh, materials related to uh, religious and social activities. So to sum up, it's very useful for uh, students and researchers working on women and gender studies, um, history of education, and religious uh, studies. The collection of uh, uh, late husband uh, is also quite huge. Um, I know this collection less than the one of uh, Professor Ogunsheye because I, I did have the opportunity to, um, to go through the folders, but, but basically uh, it, uh, he was professor of economics, so a lot of uh, folders are related to, the, um, uh, to, to, to his work in, uh, in UI, so it's also um, another important collection to, uh, to discover the history of education in the country, and he was also a businessman. Uh, and he participated in uh, uh, different economic planning committees uh, uh, of the western uh, region of Nigeria during the um, colonial period. So um, it's, uh, it's a collection that is also very important for the economic history uh, of, um, of Nigeria. So uh, uh, now going uh, into uh, the details of the ongoing projects on this um, foundation, uh, first of all, in 2021, uh, I had the opportunity to exchange with Professor Felicia Ogunsheye, and she was um, a little bit worried about the, the fact that uh, uh, there were not a lot of 
either to read the books or nor to visit the archives. So we we had the idea of doing a website um, with the support of the French Research Institute in Africa, IFRA Nigeria, uh, in order to give visibility to the collection and to let also students in other part student research in other uh, cities of Nigeria uh, to know uh, what was in the uh, in the library and what was uh, what what is in the library sorry and what is in the in the archives so um, if you are going through the websites you can see I mean the uh, professor Wunsheye provided the, the text of the website and then you can download um, uh, the funding gates of the library and the archives who were uh, who were digitized by uh, Patrick Babalola, if an Asia archivist. And then there is uh, also an ongoing project of dig digitization with um, uh, the Modern Endangered Archive Program of uh, UCLA. And this project is um, more recent. We started working on it. In 2022, with uh, Shegon Ogunsheye, uh, who again is the son uh, of the couple, and with Professor Ogunsheye uh, as well. Um, so the the objective of the project is to create a comprehensive digital archive uh, of Ogunsheye Foundation, um, and we would like to digitize at the same time the documents and the photographs, and we expect to digitize. Um, uh, a lot, um, uh, around uh, one, um, uh, 1,500 uh, items in two years. And uh, all the digitized material will be accessible uh, at the same time in the Modern and Danger Archive program uh, open access repository and in a new version of the website, uh, a more complete one, I guess, um, of the Ogun Shady Foundation. We also would like to have an hard disk with all digitized materials to be accessible in the Ogun Shady Foundation because the idea is not to close the foundation after uh, the digitization uh, project. And also it's important to uh, for the library to, uh, we, are not, we will not be able to digitize the books, digitize the books. So it's important uh, for, uh, for the foundation to stay uh, open. And we also plan to organize at the end a conference in, in, in um, UI or other Nigerian universities in, interested in, in this to uh, promote and present the, the collection. So finally, uh, these are some insights from Shegun um, and, Ogunsheye and Professor Ogunsheye on why they, they decided to uh, apply uh, for a, a modern danger archive programs um, Grant. So first of all, uh, there was the, this issue of the, the preservation of the, the materials. They are well well preserved, uh, but but they are at risk. They are all documents, and uh, with all the climate uh, impact, uh, the there is the need of preserving these documents. Um, they also uh, see as the. Um, the, the fact of having metadata as an um, easy way to access uh, information, to access um, the items uh, that are inside the folders. And also the fact to make uh, the collection available internationally, but also to students and researchers uh, who lived in Nigeria, but far from Ibadan. And also, the um, uh, uh, all the possibilities that are linked to the to the to a digitalized collection, for example, the, the possibility of searching uh, in the in the texts, and so um, find specific information, and so uh, also attract not only scholars but and uh, students, but also people from the community at large who are interested. In, uh, in the history, economical history, social history, and cultural history of, uh, of Nigeria. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. This, this was a wonderful introduction um, to preservation and to various private collections. And also, I think, a, a demonstration or an illustration of um, the complexity of doing this work 
um, and making this work available and accessible for research. Um, so I had a, a leading question, and then I think um, we would like to open it up um, to the audience for questions um, as well. Um, I'm not sure who in the room is there to help facilitate the question and answer period, um, but I think I'll get started and then hopefully someone in the room can can organize that that side of it. The first question I had, and I think this is something that each of you touched on, was were the challenges in terms of digitization and preservation, where, where to find funding, for example, how to maintain the physical archive. Um, digitization being a form of preservation, meaning that on the one hand, people can access from anywhere and not necessarily touch the materials, but also encouraging people to uh, uh, visit these archives um, and use the materials, especially those materials that have not yet been digitized because it does take time to digitize them. And then finally, um, a question that I had was how, as we start to build these different private collections, we might start thinking about um, organizing some kind of collaborative network where these okay. can support and help each other and sort of raise the visibility of these collections, not just uh, within Nigeria, but beyond. But I, I do think it's important to consider access to these archives locally um, and nationally, as well as internationally. So those are some of the things that came up for me as I was listening to each of you and each of you have sort of presented with different elements of Dr. this. Okom, we still have a presenter here. Sorry? We have a presenter here. Oh, you do? Oh, I did not see. Sorry. This um, Dr. James? Yes. OK, sorry. I, I, I apologize. Apology accepted. I, I haven't seen. I did not see the person in the room. Sorry, Dr. James, please go ahead. Okay, um, good afternoon, everybody. And good afternoon to the Lagos Study Association for this opportunity. Let me start um, by saying that I studied psychology in the university, then I did journalism. But today, I am well known more as a historian. And I think I'm enjoying that because it's more out of passion. So my contribution is going to be basically on my center. I run a center called the Center for Research, Information Management, and Media Development, which is going to be exactly 20 years by December of this year. So for the last 20 years, I've been running my center. And for the last 20 years, I've also been running a library free that I open to the public, allowing people, younger ones, to have access to come and use the library. And not only that, I've also been going around the country and making contributions and donations of books. And so far, I've donated about 76,000 books across the country. Not because the resource is there. <laughs> because presently, I don't have a sponsor. I've not collected a grant. But I just felt we have to change the society. Then in 2013, towards the, the, the preparation of Nigeria at 100 celebration, I started working on two different books. One of them was to be titled Events of the Century. Events of the Century was to be a book. If at the end of the day, I had a, about 4,000 page book which chronicled the events of everything that happened in Nigeria from 1914, January 1st, 1914, January 2nd, January 3rd, up till 2014. And that was the idea. And I was doing a second book, which was to be a collection of the speeches of all Nigerian heads of state and presidents. I'm bringing these things inside because I actually want you to understand why I started my project. And during that process, I approached uh, Professor Dora Kiyeli, who was the Minister of Information, to write the foreword of my book on Nigerian speeches. And I discovered that two of the speeches were missing, and I needed them. So when I told her, she said, oh, that's very easy. So she called NTA and, and asked NTA if NTA have it. And NTA was like, oh, sorry, our library got bought. So I told her, I said, I've actually been to the National Library. And my observation at the National Library, Yaba, was that somebody had gone to the library and pulled out all the pages of independent speeches. So for every publication you're seeing for that particular year of 1960, the independent speeches have been pulled out. So it becomes so difficult for me to assess those speeches. And what I now had to do was I had to fall back on other libraries and other archives. I had to visit Kaduna, I had to visit Enugu. Then I, I started going to 
homes of some of our former head of state I had linked to, and that was how I was able to extract all the speeches. So on the second book I was working on, which is the Independence um, Events of the Century, I'd approached the chairman of Nigeria at 100, Professor, now of blessed memory, Professor Tekena Tamuno, and I told him my project, he was excited about it. In the course of gathering my materials, I came across lots of photographs. And I started asking, what do I do with this photograph? Because obviously, all the photographs I've seen could not go into the book. I had about 5,000 photographs, and like the devil would do it, my laptop crashed. So I got discouraged. I said I wasn't going to do it again. But something keeps saying, you're not just going to give up. This is the project you want to do. You have to do it. So I started all over again. And as I talk to you today, I have about 50,000 photographs telling Nigerian stories. And that was what now pushed me to start my museum. When I started the museum, it was actually a photo museum. My idea was to just document photographs. But along the line, I was also doing tours across the country. I was visiting sites, historical sites. I was doing interviews. I was asking questions. I was taking pictures. And I said, this has to be beyond photographs. I started collecting other materials. Things that you will not want to believe any other museum in Nigeria is collecting. Nigeria has a total of about 96 uh, nat national museums and monuments. I visited 48 of them. I have an idea of what they have. And I said to myself, I want to do something completely different from what they're doing. I want to do something... Now, I'm sorry to say this. The general, the, the general um, feelings that people have visiting national museums is that they're going to see, in quotes, a Google or masquerades and all that. So I was thinking of what can I put in a museum that can attract the younger ones and they want to go and appreciate history. And that was what pushed me into running my museum, which is exactly 10 years this year. Now, if you come to my museum, let me tell you the kind of things you're going to see. I have a collection of all Nigerian postage stamps. I don't know how many of us in this hall understand what a postage stamp is, yeah. but I have a collection of all Nigerian postage stamps that have been produced from 1960 to date, 249 sets. I have the 249 sets all together. Just yesterday or so, I made a post on my social media handle, Facebook, and I was asking Nigeria, I said, if you can get the answer, take my 10,000 naira. Can you tell me how many bank notes, bank notes, Nigeria have printed from 1973, January 1st, 1973, when we started using naira and Kobo? And a lot of people responded, and nobody got the answer. And when I replied and I said 249, somebody said it's not possible. I said, out of the 249, I have, I have 180 in my museum. So I'm searching for 69 more. Now, these are little things that we are not taking cognizance of. And these are the things that are going to tell the story of Nigeria when tomorrow comes. Yes. Somebody is going to ask the question, which money did we use? How many of us know today that the current Naira, the new Naira note we're using, have four different versions in circulation? I guess none of us have taken note of that. You're either going to see the difference in the signature or the difference in the date. And that is what I am doing in my collection. So I, I collect based on dates. I collect based on signatures. Mm -hmm. I was shocked at the point in time I got, I can't remember the exact year now, but I have a particular year that I have three different signatories to Nigerian currencies. We're not taking note of these things. But the point is, mm -hmm. this is Nigerian story. This is the history we're looking at. As a secondary school student growing up, I had, we used to call it chop box. I don't know what you call it now. In my chop box, I would put pig milk and needle milk. Like a big boy. How much was pig milk then? Three naira. Presently, needle milk, pig, sorry, I don't, I don't know about uh, pig now. Needle milk is 67,000 naira. Yeah. 67,000 naira for a tin of needle milk, presently. Quote me that I said so, yes. Quote me. Now, the question is this. When tomorrow comes and you're telling a child that there was a milk called needle milk, and it's like, what does it look like? Yeah. None of us are preserving it. But if you come to my museum, you will see tins, empty tins of needle milk, bon vita, overtin, St. Louis sugar, the old cabin biscuit, because this is actually our story. For those of us that grew up in the 70s and 80s, if you're going to tell your story, you want to narrate how you use the things in school. So those are the aspects of history I'm looking at. I have my archive section, because like I said, this is a one-man project I've been doing. I'm not saying I'm not looking for, I'm, of course, obviously, I'm open for grant, but I've not collected any. But I just told myself, let me do that which my spirit is asking me to do. I have newspapers from 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, upwards. I have a collection. I, I used to brag. I tell people that if a magazine had been published in Nigeria from 1980 to date, you will see it in my museum. I have a collection of Newswatch complete, Tell Magazine complete, The Week complete, This Week complete. For all of them, I, I, just, just when I walked in, I saw Professor Ndoka Otiono. I have a collection. I made a collection of his writing on my own, even without calling him. And the last time he was in Nigeria, I visited my place. I presented it to him. And he was like, oh, boy, now what for you? I said, yes, because for me, 
we have to tell our story. And our story goes beyond artworks. Artworks is beautiful, quite all right. It's not telling us where we're coming from. I have my Nigerian coins collection. In fact, I could brag that I will compete, probably compete with the Central Bank Museum in Abuja. That is if I don't have one and then. I started collecting coins 1974. I was in primary school. It's crazy. I know what I used to do then. In my village, there's a river where people go and make sacrifices. So I go to the riverside where they make sacrifices and I pick the coins. And my grandma was like, oh boy, hey, hey, 